Okay, so the dog was freaking out and uh, had to go down past fire. Looks like it's getting cold outside. Wind's blowing. I'm starting to get a little bit of a cold. Whoa, can't, can't, I'm starting to get a little bit of a cold myself. And of course, it always scares you. Do I have COVID? No. It's just a regular, I have to blow my nose a lot. Um, and I've got these boxes impeding my way. I did not expect the dog to have a, oh no, shit, she's still upset. God damn it. So, um, I was showing you some digest size magazines, but I needed to follow up from yesterday's video. Uh, if you were watching episode four, the one entitled Gratu Sells Out, it's telling you the story of how I worked at Lowe's Movie Theater in 1984 in Arlington, Texas. And um, they start firing almost everybody that worked there. I didn't get fired, but we all had to take lie detector tests because there were some people reselling tickets. And I was talking about I, I, I know who it was that was doing it, and these two this this two boyfriend girlfriend uh, idiots, and they left and quit. They didn't probably realize they were about to get caught. And they left, and uh, all of a sudden, everyone had to take lie detector tests, and they fired a bunch of people, even though I, I, I know they passed the test. I think they just needed a scapegoat. You know how things are. But I was telling you the story, and I said, there's something I'm forgetting about. And I said, well, I'll, if I think about it, I'll tell you in, a, in the next video. And I remember it now. I remember I just started working there. And this is the summer of 84 and Ghostbusters. It's the opening night of Ghostbusters, you know. And uh, there's like 30, 40 people. It's a Friday night. They're out on dates. They have a ticket to see this movie. And there are no seats left. And they have to get their money back. Or get a, a rain check. And that shouldn't happen. That does not happen today in movie theaters. I mean, you, the computer knows you're assigned a seat. In most theaters now, you actually choose a seat. But, but And I thought, well, things aren't very sophisticated in the world of 1984. No, I think they were. And I think what had happened was uh, the, that couple was reselling tickets. And they probably made, were making tons of money. But they, they uh, uh, it happened to Ghostbusters and Star Trek uh, 3 was out, uh, Search for Spock. And these movies, they're be and I think that the corporate office realized, hey, how are how are all these? Uh, why are why is this theater overselling tickets? It shouldn't happen, and uh, so that's why everyone had to take those lie detector tests. But they never caught the real bastards. And now those maybe uh, karma will get them, or maybe in the next life something. Um, here's some more digest size magazines. These are kind of more naughty ones. Uh, this is from uh, Newark, New Jersey. But, you know, those of you into the Betty Page kind of thing, these are, uh, I mean, this, these are not, there's no nudity in these, but they're definitely for uh, very perverted people back in the 1950s. Yes. And people now that buy them. And no, that's not $150. I think that would have been $1.50. But $1.50 was a shitload of money in uh, the world of... Uh, does it even have a year? There is no year. But look at that great artwork. Some of these have Eric Stanton artwork. And Eric Stanton is almost indistinguishable from Steve Ditko. They, they worked in the same studio together. And sometimes Steve Ditko... Eric Stanton would fill in and help finish Steve Ditko's art, and sometimes Steve Ditko would help finish Eric Stanton's art. So you'll see uh, stuff that looks just like it's out of a vintage Spider-Man comic. Sometimes in the in the back of these uh, 
these magazines. This is Dominate number nine. Dominate number 15. Yeah, these are just printed. They have, oh my gosh, cross-dressing, I guess. Yeah, but it's it's kind of cool stuff. I mean, it intersects with the comic book world because the comic book world has always been influenced by this fetish world, as, as some of you may know if you've seen that Professor Marston and the Wonder Women or whatever. Um, I mean, comic book superheroes have always dressed kind of the way these bondage people dress and uh, there's a lot of bondage tying up the comic comic books were really and a lot of look at the high heels comic books came right off the same presses that that uh, printed the the dirty stuff back then but look at that artwork is that great or not I mean that see you know so then you go to Wonder Woman and then the cheetah and is, is there really that much difference uh, they had a, they had great makeup back then. Um, here, I'll prove it to you. It's just, uh, you know, and this is a look that you see today. Half the women on Instagram and Facebook do their makeup that way. Now it's come back into style. This is 1957. This is exotique. And, uh, yeah, I think that's, that's not Eric Stanton's art, but, uh, it's, I'm sure if I looked hard enough in the shit in some of these magazines, I'll,